right, let's look at the first lesson. 5.1, modeling periodic behavior. All right, so this is from your page that you have in your workbook. And basically, we need to talk about the following definitions. A pattern that repeats itself regularly is called periodic. So we, we have something where a pattern repeats itself, and we use the definition of periodic to represent that. Now, a periodic pattern can be modeled using a periodic function. So we can use an equation to model a certain periodic pattern. One repetition of a periodic pattern is called a cycle. So that's basically where we would um, be able to model one pattern and one cycle is one pattern. All right, next part. So again, a cycle is known as one pattern. If you look on the diagram that you have below, you'll see that there is multiple patterns there. We have something called a period which is right here. A period is the length of one cycle. So a period is the length of one cycle. So from here all the way down, up and around and around and around, all the way till we get back to the original spot before the pattern repeats itself is known as a cycle, what I just traced out. And the length of that whole entire thing is called the period. Now, the amplitude here, this word amplitude is basically uh, is half the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value in a cycle. So basically it goes from the top to the middle or from the middle to the bottom that's known as the amplitude. Basically you take the, the maximum plus subtract the minimum and divide that by two. Alright, now let's trace one cycle. Right there is a trace of one cycle. We can trace a cycle anywhere. It doesn't have to be the one that they indicate in the book. I could have traced anywhere a cycle, and that would be considered one cycle, one pattern that would end up repeating itself. Now, the period of this particular function is approximately, let's say, oh, this is an example, actually not for this example, but for I'm going to give you just a random example. Let's say I gave you a random example that said the period of something is equal to 8. And I want you to find, and you're given these values, f at negative 2 is 5, f at 0 is negative 1, f at 3 is negative 2. So this is an example. This example here, it has nothing to do with the actual diagram that you were given. All this is is just an example of where you're not even given a diagram. You're just told you're given a periodic function. The period is 8. Here are the values. Find, for example, the value f at 11. What will f at 11 be? Well, let's put it this way. If we know that f at negative 2 is 5, that means if I add 8 more, f at 6 will end up also being 5. So basically you need to find which one will 11 appear in one of these in its period. You take the subtract 11, subtract the x values. If that number is divisible by 8, the period, then that is the number that matches the y value as well. So 11 minus negative 2 does not give us a uh, a multiple of 8. 11 minus 0 does not give us a multiple of 8. 11 minus 3 gives us a multiple of 8. Therefore, f at 11 is negative 2. Let's try another one. So there it is. f at 11 is negative 2. Let's try another one. Let's say I want you to find f at 6. What is f at 6 equal to? Well, f at 6, find the differences between the x values. So 6 minus negative 2 is 8. So that is a multiple of the period, which is 8. 
Therefore, f at 6 is equal to 5. Let's try another one. What about f at negative 10? What will that value be? Again, what you do is you go through each of these numbers and find the differences. So what's the difference between negative 10 and negative 2? Well, the difference between that is going to be negative 8. Negative 8 is a multiple of 8. It's 8 times negative 1. Therefore, f at 10 is equal to 5. Let's keep going. What about f at negative 21? What is that equal? Try that yourselves. Stop the video and try this yourselves. All right, did you get the answer? Well, hopefully you got that negative 21 subtract 3 is negative 24, and that is a multiple of 8. Therefore, f at negative 21 is equal to negative 2. All right, let's try another one. f at negative 104. Which one of these will give us a multiple of 8? Negative 104, negative and negative 2, negative 104 and 0, and negative 104 and 3. Stop the video now. Try it yourself. Which one of these will give you the multiple of 8? Hopefully, you figured out that the answer is going to be negative 1. f at 0 subtracted from negative 104 is a multiple of 8. All right, next one. What happens if I change the period to be 7? Which one of these now will f at negative 104 match? Well, think about it and think about it some more. Stop the video now. Alright, hopefully you know that for this value there are no values. It is not possible to have a multiple of 7 for any of these values. So this actually has no values. Alright, now, and that's what this information here is about. If you're wondering what this was all about, this had to do with this question here. So this is the idea that I can find any multiple and I can find the what the next y value is as long as I know the period. All right, so let's recap some definitions. Amplitude is equal to the max minus the min divided by two. Period is the length of a cycle. A cycle is one pattern and a periodic means that a pattern that repeats itself. All right, so looking at this example, I want you to determine what the period is of this example. What is the period of this example? Hopefully, you counted that the period of this example is 15. So let's say we start at this red button dot right there. We would end the red dot at that dot right there. So if we count the number of dots, whoops, for that example, you will see that there are 15 dots that make a pattern. This is known as the period. What we traced out in yellow is the actual cycle. All right, let's try the next example. You are David is, a competitive, is on a competitive swim team. As part of his daily practice at the community pool, he is required to swim the breaststroke for 10 consecutive laps of the pool. The pool is 200 meters long, and he swims from the shallow end to the deep end at a constant speed of 50 meters per minute. Graph David's distance in meters from a starting port in the shallow end versus time, versus time for 10 laps of the pool. So let's do that. And we have 200 meters he's traveling. And we need 10 laps. So what we're going to do is every 8 minutes he returns back to his original starting point. The reason for we figured out it was 8 minutes is the pool is 200 meters long and he travels 50 meters per minute. So 4, meter, four minutes to get 200 meters across and another 4 minutes to come back. 
Assuming, of course, he's traveling at the same rate, he doesn't stop, and it continues there. So think of him as another, the next Michael Phelps. All right, here we go. Let's draw this out and see where this goes. And every eight minutes, he returns. Every four minutes, he's up. And this is him swimming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, ten times. So the period of this is actually eight minutes. The amplitude is going to be 200 minus 0 divided by 2. The amplitude is 100 meters. Now, to state the domain and range, we have to look at this and say, okay, what's the domain of this function? Well, x belongs to real such that x is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 80. So x is between 0 and 80. The range is y belongs to real, such that y is between 0 and 200. All right, and that's all, folks, for this. Here's your homework. This is your homework for the entire chapter of Chapter 5, including the review. All right, have a good night.